welcome to JLTV. This is Stand With Us, and I'm Roz Rothstein, your host. And today, we're lucky we have Kay Wilson joining us again for a part two to the story <clears throat> of how she survived a machete attack by a <clears throat> Palestinian terrorist, how her friend was uh, murdered in front of her eyes, and um, this remarkable story, which we heard in part one. So. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, show that again so that you're able to see her full story. It's hard to listen to. I can't even imagine what it was like to live through that. Um, so just in brief, you, you were um, cornered uh, in a forest, you were tied up, you were both macheted, and uh, your friend was murdered, and you managed to walk a mile to uh, where Israelis were picnicking, and then the chaos, but you were rescued. You were taken to Hadassah Hospital, where an Arab doctor uh, saved your life. Uh, I wanted to ask you about this issue. How do you put all that together in your mind about humanity, about people, and, and about the conflict that continues to rage on between Palestinian people and the Jewish people in, in Israel. How do you put this together so that you don't fear everybody you see? Uh, well, first of all, I did six months of intensive trauma therapy. I mean, I couldn't even look at the color green because it was happened in a forest. I didn't want to listen to a bird. And to hear Arabic uh, was terrible. So actually, I, I took, I borrowed, if you have it, my Arab friend who's a bus driver. And I used to say to him, call me and speak to me in Arabic. Let me know, you know, and he very much helped me through things. Uh, so, I mean, I look at my friendship with my Arab Israeli friends and this surgeon who saved my life, and they despise the hatred in the Palestinian Authority and in the Hamas, you know, they absolutely loathe it. So I know from that rationally that not every Arab or Muslim is a terrorist, okay? Uh, and I won't hold accountable every Arab and Muslim for terrorism. It's simply not true. Many, many Arabs were outraged at the attack on myself and the, the late Christine Lucan. Uh, so what do I do? Roz, I have to do it logically, okay? Use uh, analysis here and trauma therapy. I mean, I look at these people, who, and I, they are people, the ones who try to murder me. I will not say that they are animals because we exempt them from responsibility. And I remember being in court and looking at them, and I was so bewildered, I was so confounded with how can two people who were once little boys grow up and slaughter with machetes two innocent women because they thought that they were both Jewish. That was their motive in court, all right? So how do I do all of this with the conflict? I have to go back to uh, incitement, hatred, brainwashing, which is the constant, and victimhood, and the constant narrative of the Palestinian Authority and the Hamas. That's what differentiates these people who did this to myself from respectable, educated, intelligent Arab Israelis. And very much Israel is a country which affords people that kind of education and a mixed culture. And they, they grow up with their own system and I, I hold the Palestinian Authority and the Hamas uh, almost entirely responsible. Let's, let's peel the onion just for a moment. Uh, you're talking about the hate and the incitement that we can see any day of the week. We can uh, look at it on the internet. Um, this screaming hatred, this, this um, you know, making the profile of the Jewish person as a monkey or a pig, that, uh, you know, this genocidal call that we see by Hamas or by the Palestinian Authority television shows for little children. I mean, it's just criminal. Mm. Uh, and then you end up with two men who were once little boys and heard the wrong messaging. You end up with two men who bound and gag and murder you, uh, or try to anyways, but you survive, thank God. Um, so. Yeah, it's a real problem. I'm not sure that we can ever forecast peace as long as we continue to see this, you know, regeneration of hate 
and and it's a serious hate. It's not just you know, ah, oh, we just dislike them. They're bad people. It's a serious hate. Uh, like it is know. a serious hate, and you know the 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 inconsistency. I mean, you can say whatever people can say. Oh, there's an occupation. It's because of the occupation. But the people who flew into the twin towers were aristocrats. Okay, people are being beheaded. On there's a British soldier who's beheaded on London streets. There's no occupation there. You know, it's like I'm not saying the political status quo is ideal for anybody, but it's not poverty, and it's not occupation, and it's not because they're Muslims. It's a radicalization and a diet of hatred, which is encouraged, and I, I find that the Western media especially are very compliant in this, and, and organizations that don't address this incitement that I would expect American organizations, American Jewish organizations such as J Street, which refuse to address any incitement within the Par Palestinian Authority or the Hamas. And you know, that's a, that's a smear on my slaughtered American friend's name. And it's an insult to Arab Israelis who are trying to confront the hatred in their, their own uh, culture. Well, because it infantilizes of Palestinians as, as though they're not capable <clears throat> of teaching peace to their people. Well, it plays on this pornography of victimhood. Yes. I mean, I could have, I could be the ultimate victim. I was a victim of a terror attack, but I don't want to be congratulated for my victimhood. And to hold any individual or any group as a permanent victim, it is neither true, moral, or helpful. That's for me and that's concerning the Palestinians as a, as a whole. So we're going to continue this conversation and how you have survived um, emotionally over the last four years and we'll be right back so don't leave us.